Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go over the New York Times best books of 2024 so far. I love myself a list. I really enjoy the New York Times and their take on books. I don't always agree with them, but sometimes it's really fun sparring with an institution. <laughs> so if you're new to my channel, then hi, welcome. I am Shelly and I love books and reading and I like doing these listy videos. I've done a bunch of them. So if you're watching as an unsubscribed person, I would encourage you to subscribe, stick around without any other rambling on. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. I'm actually going to start with nonfiction and then I will move my way into fiction. So the first book is called Cue the Sun by Emily Nussbaum. This is supposed to be given the story, it's like um, the account of how reality TV became a thing. The invention of re reality TV is a subtitle and that's what it is about. It is the origin story of reality TV. Now, if uh, I don't watch any reality TV, do I? I mean, I watch YouTube. <laughs> that's different than watching reality TV. I'm not a reality television watcher. Back in the day, I did watch some reality television, you know, American Idol, that th that kind of thing, but it's been years since, I mean, I'm trying to think, oh, I had a whole phase where I was watching cooking stuff, like the Food Network was my thing to watch. Um, but yeah, I'm not really a reality television person, so I don't think this book is necessarily targeted to me, although any subject could be really interesting depending on the writer. So. If it's your thing, then maybe you should know about it. The next book is When the Clock Broke by John Gantz. This is going to be America in the 1990s, which I was like, ah, oh, are we gonna get like pop culture in the 1990s? But no, no, we're not gonna get my so-called life. Instead, it is more about politics and demagogues and the Cold War and how it brought us to our anti-democratic anti-democratic position in the U.S. today. So uh, not necessarily my thing. I have read books on politics and enjoyed them, but not necessarily my, it's not tickling my interests very much. The next book is Knife Meditations After a Murder Attempt by Salman Rushdie. I read that as knee, K-N-E-E, -E, like your the the part of your body <laughs> and I was like oh a book on knees that would actually interest me because I have a trick knee that I've had a couple of surgeries on um but no it's knife which I'm sure would be really interesting for those who really love Salman Rushdie but it's of course going to be talking about he's talking about his assassination attempt um and how he survived and you know all of that kind of stuff back in 2022 the incident happened in 2022 I've not read anything by Salman Rushdie. I don't know. Um, I was more excited when I saw the word knee rather than knife. That's, that's probably amazing. The next book that they are recommending has quite the title. Everyone who has gone here is here. The United States, Central America, and the Making of a Crisis by Jonathan Blitzer. This is going to be about the U.S. foreign policy and how we, how U.S. foreign policy affects Central America and the current migrant crisis. Another mouthful of a book. The Wide Wide Sea, Imperial Ambition, First Contact, and the Fateful Final Voyage of Captain James Cook, which is going to be telling the story of British explorer James Cook. But we're going to be getting a little bit of a, a spin on it. It's not just an adventure tale. Um, it's going to be taking the path of David Grand's The Wager or Chris, uh, Candace Millard's The River of the Gods, meaning that it's going to have a bit more of a critical look and also thinking about the effects of colonialism that stemmed from some of these expeditions. The first book that has actually got me kind of excited, The, the Rebels Clinic, The Revolutionary Lives of Franz Fanon by Adam Schatz. 
I feel like I just said a cuss word there. Okay, like, <gasps> okay, <laughs> so this is what the little blurb on it says. This absorbing biography of a black psychiatrist, writer, and revolutionary Franz Fanon highlights a side of him that's often eclipsed by his image as a zealous partisan, that of a caring doctor who ran a secret clinic for Algerian rebels. Both the fact that he is a zealot or seems to be a zealot, but also had the softer side, the contrast of the both, of both, a secret clinic, fighting for good, a little bit of Robin Hooding, that's what it sounds like to me at least. And so it's kind of tickling my excitement of this kind of topic. The last nonfiction book is Fee, a memoir by Alexandria Fuller. This is her fifth memoir. Memoir. Has anybody read anything by her or read any of these books or read any books by any of these authors? All of that would be helpful. Feedback is, is a wonderful thing. This is her fifth memoir. I've never heard of this author. So Alexandria Fuller, who describes the sudden death of her 21-year-old son. Oh my goodness, it sounds like the year of magical thinking a bit. Or I know that um, Joan Didion did a book about um, the time in which she lost her daughter. <laughs> but it sounds devastating devastating to, and it says it also leaves blah, 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 blah. it says it's not for the faint of heart it leaves the reader a set, uh, with the sense of having known a lovely and lively young man the fiction section yay there weren't that many non-fiction that had me interested the only one was really the the Franz the Franz biography. So in, in terms of fiction, here's the first one on the list and it is Long Island Compromise by Taffy Brodesser Achner. So Brodesser Achner, this is her second uh, novel and it said it is a sprawling yet nimble. I wonder if it's a really short page count. Let me look it up. They did not mean page count. This is a 464 page book. And so I'm thinking when they say nimble, it means maybe that it's quite pacey. So it is a fictional account, fictionalized account of a real kidnapping. So it is about a patriarch who is snatched away from his driveway in the suburbs of New York in the 1980s and the effects of his abduct, abduction that echo through the lives of his three children, even into their adulthood. The concept sounds fine. Um, I don't know. I'm, it's not that I'm scared away from, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not frightened away from long books, you know, because I'm reading this one right now and but I don't know. It's not, it's not doing anything for me. Next is a book that I'm definitely not interested in. I'm not trying to yuck someone's yum. So if you like this writer, please keep on writing, uh, p please keep on enjoying her writing. But it is called All Fours by Miranda July. And it's, um, a comic novel, blah, 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 all the things, um, road trip novel, comic novel, all that kind of stuff. And I, <laughs> I don't know the, okay, here's the real deal. One, one time, a long time ago, someone did that game that Steve does, Have You Read, with Steve Donahue. And it basically everyone on Booktube tries to stump D Steve Donahue. Um, like, we, we ask him questions like, have you read X, Y, and Z, right? Um, and you get points if he hasn't read it because the man has read everything. And somebody submitted Miranda July and he eviscerated her. Steve Donahue eviscerated her writing in that video and it has stuck with me as a writer that I do not want to read from that she is like a waste of time because of how he spoke about her and that has that is what has stuck with me um so yeah oh my phone is ringing that was Ted and we were discussing my haircut my haircut okay so the next book is from an author that I know actually pretty well I've read his main those his main books and it is Lev Grossman who and I've read the magicians series and um, his new book is the bright sword there I had a lot of fun with The Magicians and I don't know, I still feel kind of mixed about some of the decisions that Grossman put into his novels, but I thought some of the things were done really well. I obviously read all three, so, you know, I don't know. But anyways, this Arthurian legend, sound, uh, this Arthurian retelling sounds really interesting and I'm, I'm fascinated to see what he'll do. Um, yeah, I think that's the right way to put it. I'm like very curious because I do know this author and I'm, and I know like I've read 
three books by him. And so I'm, I'm just curious, okay? I'm very curious. But I might wait, I might wait for um, some reviews, you know, to come out on booktube rather than just diving in and, and picking it up and reading it. Okay, the next book is James by Percival Everett, one that I've read and I love. I don't know hardly anybody, if anyone at all, that disliked James by Percival Everett. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna continue to talk about it because you all know about it, okay? Like everyone's talked about this book. The next book is Good Material by Dolly Alderton. I can tell you that I quite like the cover. I love those colors. The colors are drawing me in absolutely. I like the hot pink and the bright blue and the bold green. And actually, I don't really like that yellow, but in this cover, it is working. And I quite like the, you know, this everyday movement of putting on socks. I don't know. It's, it's just working for me. And this, so this is about a 35 year old struggling to make sense of breakups and delivers the most delightful aspects of romantic comedy. So snappy dialogue, realistic re relationship dynamics, funny meet cutes and misunderstandings, um, um, and leaves behind cliched gender roles and tr the traditional marriage plot, which actually sounds really, really good. I kind of hope that she does it in that like Emily Henry style, because I think what people like about Emily Henry, and I've read one Emily Henry um, book lovers, is that there is really adorable dialogue, great characters, like um, both of the characters are flawed in their own way, but not so much that you totally dislike them. And they, there's more to their lives than just finding a partner. And that's, you know, there's depth to the books. And I think that that's the way romantic comedy books are trending towards. Um, you know, we want emotionally mature adults in our books. And so if she can deliver that, I could see this book doing really, really well. Um, and I'm glad to see like a really light book on this list and not something that's look, I would not like the book, not that I'm going to read it. I don't know. I'm curious about it, but I would be loath to a pickup to have read a book sold as cute, light, um, with maybe some relationship snafus and qu quippy dialogue. I would be so upset if it ended up being like darker and way deeper and way more like twisted that and way more like maybe even literary, um, like trying to be more highbrow um, than it was billed for. Uh, one of the things that I really also love about Emily Henry is that she's just so good at who she's writing for. Um, and I, she's not trying to, you know, push outside of this genre. Um, and so anyways, I just wanted to mention that because sometimes I think that writers try and do too much and that's where they actually fail. Then we have Martyr with an exclamation point by uh, uh, Kaviv Akbar. This is about a young Iranian American who is overcoming addiction and is grieving his parents' death. Um, and I, from what I know, we don't see, it's not like a drug induced fever dream. We actually meet the main character of this novel when he is on the road to recovery, which I very much like. I am kind of over like. I don't know, drug trip dreams. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it's not my thing. Oh, another book I have read, The Hunter by Tana French. This is the sequel to The Searcher. You have to read the first book to read the second book. You just have to. It is a great book though. Tana French is all about the slow burn mystery with really, really wonderful characters at the center of it. And this one delivered. It was very slow burn. I liked it though, because we're in Ireland. Um, well, we're in Ireland for all her novels. I think at least are all the ones that I've read. And um, so we're in Ireland and it's just like quiet country that seems to have, it's like small town with a seedy underbelly kind of thing. So yeah, I just, I really liked the novel. Then we have two books in succession that are actually Booker nominees. We have Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange, um, which I'm not interested in reading because I tried There There and it didn't work for me. Um, and so this is both the prequel and the sequel to There There. Um, I think those who like Tommy Orange's works will really enjoy this book, but I don't, 
the there there just really wasn't for me my camera stopped recording how rude um so the next book is headshot by rita bullwinkle this is going to be about a boxing tournament and there are eight contestants and when they're it's almost written like short stories and when the two contestants are actually fighting each other the story focuses on those characters or those contestants and the backgrounds and their lives and what this fight might mean and so I've heard it's structured almost like short stories I think um but I, I do know for sure that because when two contestants fight one of the contestants is out and you have a winner and so because and then the winner faces off to with another contestant and so obviously the people that the contestants who are winning they're getting more page time you're reading more about them because I think when somebody loses they're kind of out of the story as well as out of the competition so uh, an interesting premise to say the least. And then finally we have Beautyland by Marie Helene Bertin Bertino. This is going to be set in 1970s Philadelphia. An alien girl sent to Earth before she's born communicates with her fellow life forms via facts as she helps gather intel about whether our planet is habitable. A habit, habit, habitable. Habitable. That just sounds wrong. Okay, it's supposed to be a, fa a funny, sad novel that follows the girl and her single mo mother as they find the means to persevere. I want to know more about this. Let me, let me go, let me just, one second. I think it could work. I think it could work. I am assuming by the title, or I thought maybe by the title that it might have something to do with beauty or standards of beauty or critique on beauty, which are to things that I'm very much interested in. Um, the commercial commercialization of looks and what counts as beauty standards. I like all that kind of stuff. I'm so interested in all of it. So I thought because the title is Beautyland, we might get something like that, but it doesn't sound like it's like that at all. It really is about s someone feeling out of place and then trying to find their place in this world um, because they are actually out of place. My nose was itchy and something fierce. So if it's all red, that's just know that that's what it is. Okay. So that is it. That is all of this list. And I don't know. Um, I don't know. Beautyland sounds really interesting to me. Um, actually good material sounds super interesting to me. And then the Lev Grossman book. I think those two, the Lev Grossman book and, and not Beautyland and good material. Those are the books that are kind of stand out to me. What has stood out to you? Let me know. Have you read anything? Um, what did you think? Is, have you read some of the things I haven't read? Can you shed some light on it? That would be wonderful. But yeah, that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Hello. And so we all took a nap for about an hour. I love you. Uh, oh no, I want to do bacon ranch, bacon, bacon, chicken ranch sandwiches.